Hi everyone, welcome to Muse Theme. Steve Harris here. I'm super excited today to reveal our new Gallery Connect widget. This is probably the biggest and most powerful widget that we've ever built. Gallery Connect is a suite of media gallery tools all driven by spreadsheets. If you're familiar with our Connect widgets, they use online spreadsheets to provide the content for these widgets so they can easily be edited and revised by clients or yourself without even opening Muse. If I scroll down here and look at the Gallery Connect page, you'll see that we have a wide variety of different formats for our Gallery Connect. So here's a default slider. Here's a mosaic grid and a tiled grid. Here's a carousel. We have a compact slider. Uh, you can even open and close the thumbnail section on this. We've got a sidebar grid slider. And then here's just a very simple slider. You'll notice as well, if I scroll up to, let's say one of the mosaic grids here, if I open it up in full screen, we have forward and back controls, of course, and this is just an image sample. But on the next slide, we have a Vimeo video embedded in it. On the next slide after that, we have a YouTube video embedded. So this gallery is a great option for you to mix different types of media, video, you can even use SoundCloud. It's really, really powerful. It's fully responsive. So when I shrink the browser down, you'll notice that the grid is automatically adjusting itself. All of these widgets are fully responsive. Now our Gallery Connect is built using an open source gallery plugin called the Unite Gallery. Very popular, uh, available for WordPress and Joomla, lots of big systems. Well, now it's finally available for Muse. The great thing about leveraging to an existing open source gallery is that much of the heavy lifting of building the gallery components is done. And what we really needed to focus on was just making the Muse integration simple, making it work with our new Connect spreadsheet system, and everything has worked really smooth. So I will say though that this is our first release of Gallery Connect and because it is such a massive widget, we're considering this a beta release. So we encourage you to give it a shot, let us know how it works for you. And if you need any revisions, which I'm sure there will be many requests for, we'll make those right away so that this widget becomes a new standard for galleries in Muse. Let me show you another really cool feature of the Gallery Connect widgets. So if I jump into Muse here, I have the galleries all loaded up in my library panel. And you'll notice that we have a folder for Gallery Connect with all of the different formats for the widgets below. If I drag one of the widgets out onto the canvas, and let me close this so we can see, and I open up the panel, you'll notice like the other Connect widgets that we have the ability to load the spreadsheet content right here. But below that, you'll see it says Google Spreadsheet Key Presets. So basically what presets are, are they are a huge number of styling and formatting options for the gallery. We didn't want to include those in the panel because there's just way too many to use. But if I look down at these links here, it says Google Sheets preset template and I click on that. Here's what a preset template looks like. So you have highly refined customization controls over this gallery, yet again, pulled in through an outside spreadsheet. So you can make these changes on the fly without even opening Muse. The other really fantastic part of using this format for the presets is that we can build custom presets for you and distribute them to our members. So you'll be able to just queue up or load up a new preset file that we've built and your gallery is going to look drastically different. So as you can see, in terms of style control, functionality control, and just pure options, there is nothing that can compete with these new Gallery Connect widgets. So to get started, let's go ahead and set up a base spreadsheet. I'll show you where to find all of our samples and we can get some content loaded into a gallery. So when you download the Gallery Connect widgets and you open the file, you'll see it's a zip here. We have, of course, the Moolib for you to load into Muse, and then we have all these local CSV files. These are more if you want to use the local CSV version. But again, I don't see why you'd want to. The Google Spreadsheet version is certainly better for customization and flexibility. So the way that we'll go ahead and use this is I've double clicked the Moolib and my widget is loaded into Muse in the library panel. So let's go ahead and drag a gallery out on the page. We'll go with the uniform grid, okay, just like that. And without even changing any settings, you should be able to preview this widget in the browser and it loads up with just some default image content. There you go. So everything is working perfectly uh, right out of the box. So let's go ahead now and start adding our own in. If I jump back to Muse and I open up the panel, you'll notice down here below it says, here's the Google Sheets content template. So if we click on that, 
it's going to load up the base content template that we used for this widget. So you won't be able to edit this. I can because I'm partly an owner on it, but in your version, it will be view only. So what you'll need to do is click file and make a copy. And let's create a copy of this and we'll just say gallery template sample video. Okay. And click okay. There, so now we have our own content template ready to go. And if you're familiar with our sidebar connect video, the first thing we'll do is go file and publish to the web. We're gonna publish this as a CSV file. And in settings below, we just need to make sure it says automatically republish when changes are made. That looks good. So let's click publish and okay. So once we've done that, we just need to snag the ID. It's up here in the URL. So I'll copy that. I'm going to drop that into the widget in the content section there. Okay. Now let's just preview it again to make sure it's all linked up and working well. Okay, everything looks good. So now let's go ahead and revise some of this content. So if I open up the spreadsheet, let's work column by column and I'll show you what everything means. So first we have media type. We can be an image, YouTube, Vimeo. You just need to enter it in the same exact format that we've used here. Next, we have an ID. The ID is a way that you can control the ordering of the gallery. So of course, just change the ID to correspond to where you want this in the gallery. Uh, you don't need to go ahead and shuffle rows up and down. Just changing this is enough to control order. Next up, we have the video ID. So the video ID is going to differ based on what provider you're using, but generally this is the format it looks for. So it's kind of a small string of characters and numbers and that sort of thing. So let's take YouTube, for example, I'll jump onto YouTube. And now that I'm on YouTube, let's just pick a random video. Here's a guitar music video. And all you need to do to find the video ID is look up in the URL bar. So here's the ID right here. And I'll just copy that, drop back to my gallery template, and I'm going to paste it in. Okay, so now that I've pasted that video ID in, let's go ahead and preview it in the browser to make sure it's working. Now I just wanna double check here, we do have some custom thumbnails loaded up. So in this case, it's using the thumbnail of the car. So if I take my gallery here and refresh it, the item with the thumbnail of the car is now the first one. This gallery must have random load order applied. It's a preset setting that you can change. So let's click play on that. And it is our relaxing guitar music video that we just linked up. So that's working well. So basically you need to work through your entire spreadsheet here and add in video IDs. Uh, you can add in a SoundCloud ID, which you'll find on the SoundCloud site for any song. And then moving on into columns here, we have the image source for thumbnails and the image source for a full size image. So on the gallery here, if something is an image, which this one is, we have a thumbnail size, which is the smaller one and a full size. You don't need to specify a thumbnail, but it's a little bit better for load speed if you have smaller images for each. So you might be asking yourself, how do my clients upload these images? And that's a good question. If your clients aren't comfortable adding images via FTP, then they might run into trouble. So something that we've done, and you can even see in our template here, we're using this service called imagesafe.org. And ImageSafe just looks like this. It's a totally free, very simple image hosting service. So you can just simply create an account on ImageSafe, click Browse Files, and I can upload a new image. So I have an image here of a skateboarder. I have a thumb and a large version. So let's just go ahead and add the thumb and upload. Okay, and now I'm gonna add the large version. Click okay, there you go. Now just to mention image safe is just a free tool out there. There's tons of free tools that will work just as well as this if you're not comfortable with this one. Uh, it's really up to you to decide where you wanna host them. So now once I have these uploaded, I can click on either one of them. So here's my thumb version and it just gives us the link here. So we can copy that and I'm gonna go back to my template. So image number one, let's replace that thumb just like that, okay. And then I'll go back and I'll select our large size image and I'll grab the URL there, and I'll replace it in this block here as the image source, okay. And now once I've clicked off, it should save. So let me refresh our gallery in the browser. And there you can see our girl skateboarding in the corner. And if I click the large size, it shows up instantly. 
So next settings in this spreadsheet column are we have the video ID. So if you decide to use an HTML5 video like this, which is a self-hosted video, you need to provide the links to these three different file types. And that's to ensure different compatibility on the web. Next up, we have a URL. So if you decide to link something to a URL, you can enter the link in here. And if you don't want to link anything, what you can do is actually just use a hash symbol. So you can just go like this. And that's good enough in that field if you don't want any sort of link. Last up in the spreadsheet, we have our alt text and we have a description, which is basically a caption. And you'll see that those also show up. If I open up this, it says up here, this is an image sample. So you can go ahead and revise those to be anything you want. And these galleries are well optimized for SEO purposes. So that's it for the content template. You can see that it's quite simple. There's not that much to it. Uh, in terms of Muse setup here, I just dropped the gallery right into the page. I don't have any breakpoints or anything set up. And you can see that it's instantly responsive. The gallery is really smart and really aware of what the browser is doing. You could also set the galleries to be full width. So if we go stretch to browser width, and I re-preview that in the browser, so there you can see we get a much larger display and if I shrink the browser everything's shuffling around so it's working perfectly. So that's it for the content setup side. Now the last section of this you may want to mess with is the presets and if I go into the Google Sheets preset template you can see this gallery has a ton of preset options. So again what you'll do is create a copy. So I'll just go video demo presets Okay, and now once I've done that, I can yet again publish this to the web as a CSV. Okay, looks good. So I'll publish that up. Okay, now I'm just going to grab the ID for it. I'll drop that into my content panel here. Okay, there's my new ID for presets. I'm going to shrink that back down a little so it's easier to work with. Okay, and so now we could just work through the presets. I will not cover every preset in this video because each gallery has its own set of presets. In this case, there is 74 of them available. So just quickly looking down the list here, you can see we have things like gallery width maximums. Um, we have things like enabling preloaders. We have padding controls. We have alignment controls. And we do have a notes column on the right side here that kind of gives you an idea of what each of these things do. So here's some shadow options, um, some sizing controls. Here's overlay controls. I mean, the options on this thing are endless. And it will probably take some experimentation to tweak it to how you'd like it to be perfect. But uh, you'll find more information on some of these presets if you need more information on the Unite Gallery website. They have some detailed documentation on what each of those presets does. So the last thing I wanna cover on the Gallery Connect widget is that in the panel itself, there is a very small styling control block. And that just gives you color selections and font selections. We didn't want to move color selections to the spreadsheet because you don't get a great color picker like you do in Muse. And really, the color selection should probably be set by the designer within Muse. And presets and content can be controlled by your client outside. So these are all very basic, very straightforward settings, things like border colors, overlay colors, and text sizing and options. So that's the Gallery Connect widget. There's a lot to it, as you can see, but they're really simple in terms of setup. Thanks again for watching this video. And remember, this is our first beta version of Gallery Connect. So if you want revisions to this widget, just let us know and we'll get them done right away. Cheers.